Good morning, allies. Today is Wednesday. Uh, hopefully I can be there and back uh, to the hotel by noon. Um, we're pretty much pretty much killing it out here, uh, doing an amazing job. Everybody's very happy, so that's very good news. Yeah, another, another day in paradise. Amazing sunrises in Colorado, just amazing. Hey, what's up everybody? Good evening, allies. So I'm, uh, I'm on my last day of travel. I'm flying home tomorrow morning. And I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't do anything. And uh, I thought, so I thought I'd sit down and do something I haven't done in a long time, which is just kind of go through some of my, the last comments that I've had over the last couple of weeks, comments I want to talk about. Um, just touch bases with everybody a little bit, say thank you, appreciate the comments, appreciate all the, all the love there. Let me get something out of the way first and foremost. 9,500 subscribers. I'm at 9,500 subscribers right now. And to a lot of the people that um, started watching the, sh the, the channel here from the Philippines, hello, love you guys, love your food even more. All right, so with that said, uh, I've got some chamomile tea. I'm gonna go grab that right now. Yeah, I'm really burnt. <laughs> I'm burnt out. Mile. Check out this shirt. Got that Bob Ross shirt here, painting the galaxy. Amazing. So uh, let's just let's just dive right into it. I'm just going right down my comments feed. Talk to you directly. So Freedom Doom asked, "Did you visit Spider Co while you were there?" I made a point to go to the factory outlet store last few times I was there. I did not even know. That was the thing. I didn't even know that that was uh, something that you could do. In fact, I'm going to, I don't think I have enough time to do it now. Um, <laughs> I wish I had known about that yesterday when I had a day off. I would have I would have definitely checked that out. So this is, this is getting to the ham radio stuff a bit. On the ham radio crash course video, somebody posted, uh, don't like FRS and GMRS being mentioned in the same context as amateur radio, especially when it comes to the Baofengs. These radios are not FCC certified for use on FRS, GMRS. Even though they are capable of operating in those services, it's a violation of SCC regulations to do so. Yeah, so if you take this Baofeng and you use the software to program it, you can make this operate on FRS and GMRS frequencies. That's technically illegal. Um, do I have radios that are programmed like that? I do, full, full, full admitting. I don't generally broadcast though on FRS and GMRS and if I ever needed something like that, it would most likely be in a survival situation or a emergency situation and then I have no issue using it. So that's why I include it. So to stick with ham radio crash course for a little bit, uh, the emergency comms video went out on Monday or Tuesday. Thank you everybody for watching it and commenting. I got a lot of really good comments, but I also got one comment that was not so great, but it's a good discussion point that I'd like to like to springboard. Oscar Madison said, great info, but something really should have been said about licensing. While when in SHTF licensing won't matter during drills and testing, it does matter and I don't want to see anyone get in trouble. Also, saying this is a hammer radio crash course is misleading, don't get me wrong, I like the video, but several people in my MCOM group all said the same thing, just thought you should know. Again, I like the video, please forgive me uh, if I come off wrong, really don't mean to. Yeah, no problem Oscar, uh, I get it completely and I linked you to, and everybody else that'd like to go check it out, I'll post a link um, in one of the tabs here. I have a five part series called the Ham Radio Crash Course. We're on part five, there's gonna be more parts. And it's a it's a concept of, you know, every every video has its own purpose, its own reason, its own being, right? And so that's all that is. It's, it's just, um, it's a way for me to, to get down some of the knowledge that I've learned up over the years in a video format that is uh, hopefully fun to watch. So thank you for watching. I appreciate the comment. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, hopefully though, you go look at the back catalog and that, that scratches that itch you were talking about, specifically licensing. I did a whole entire video on licensing. I thought it was pretty good. Go check it out, thanks. Uh, going back to Rained Out Fails video, I asked what was your favorite dinosaur, and you know, everybody's got, there's no wrong answer to your favorite dinosaur, but I myself also like the pterodactyl. And um, Abilene Aji, I believe that's how you pronounce your name. Per uh, pterodactyl because it's spelled funny, right? Because it's a, it, there's a P in front of the pterodactyl. I also like possum with O in front of it, opossum. 
For the same reason, however, it's not a dinosaur, it's a marsupial. P.S. I had to Google marsupial and pterodactyl to spell them right. Cheers. Thank you, buddy. So to go back to the emergency comms, sorry. Uh, Logic Bob, Mark, Aaron, you, you guys both could comment. Um, Logic Bob, though, you mentioned that I didn't mention being licensed in um, as a part of the video. And, and I got a lot of comments like that. Well, so one, this is an emergency comms video. So the assumption is, is that you're in an emergency. Um, it was also after my ham radio licensing video, which what I should have done, a smart YouTuber, would have referenced their licensing video. And that would have been much better because then you could just go watch that whole uh, video in my diatribe on getting licensed. I absolutely support getting licensed, no question there, nothing like that. Because exactly as, as many have mentioned, if you wait to crack open a radio in an emergency situation, you will lack the fundamental skills to be useful with that radio. So you have to practice. The only way you practice is if you're transmitting. Receiving's great, but you gotta transmit. So there are um, there are two comments that I get constantly on the Filipino mukbang videos, and I want to I want to talk to them very briefly. Um, one is my pronunciation and my family's pronunciation of the food. I totally appreciate the comments. I totally thank you for trying to help me get better. And I, I think I am like uh, Polobok, Polobok, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm, I'm favoring the second, the L-O-H, the low, the Polobok, Polobok. Anyway, again, not my native language and I have very um, little exposure to Tagalog, so I don't have the subtleties. Like my family, uh, my wife's family speaks Vietnamese most often, so I have a bit more tonal understanding of Vietnamese. I uh, can't speak that worth a lick at all either, but at the same time, Filipino, uh, the Tagalog is new to me. So, thank you for your patience. Hope I'm not offending you. Two, uh, my wife is Chinese. Chinese, 100% Chinese. Um, why, are, why is she familiar with Filipino food and certain things like that? Well, her family uh, fled China and they ended up in Vietnam. They fled communism. Communism followed them to Vietnam some years later, in which they fled Vietnam again. Um, after getting caught multiple times by the, the military police, they made it away to Malaysia. And then from Malaysia, after spending a couple years, like literally on a beach, beach like a tent city, they made it to the Philippines. And that's where they were in a refugee camp. So they have a great fondness for, I mentioned Hollow Hollow and they love balut, but the balut's not necessarily a Filipino only thing. They have that in, in uh, all Southeast Asian countries. So familiarity, yes. Uh, cultural understanding, not so much. So um, when that question's come up, particularly because she hasn't been on camera, you uh, understand she's not Filipino uh, or Filipina. Now, if you want to see Leia, I've gotten that question a lot too, is she should be on camera more. I did a video on the uh, Brew Ho Ho, the Christmas beer fest party. She's in that video. So if you're so inclined, you can go check that out. Uh, as just a, a side note too, I've had a lot of really good back and forth with uh, commenter The Vein Slayer. So appreciate all your um, your recent comments. You kind of started watching the, the vlogs recently. So just wanted to call you out and say thanks, bud. Uh, good comments, good, good talking with you. So now I'm actually really bummed that I didn't go to uh, the Spider Thrift store. <laughs> like, really bummed. Uh, I'm gonna see if it's on the way back to the airport and I might swing by there tomorrow morning. I hope they open at 8 a.m. So I think that'll do it for today, guys. Uh, question of the day. I really liked going to the Garden of the Gods in the end. I was bummed that I didn't have my drone, but I'm curious, what do you guys view as like your favorite national park? I really liked going to Bryce Canyon when I was a kid in Utah. Uh, I had been designed, but I think I was too young to really remember it. That's probably my most favorite. Um, I've been to tons of other national parks, but that's that's definitely up there. Um, yeah, so tell me what your thoughts are, and this is not limited to America, because there's national parks all over the world for the nations that those parks exist in. So feel free to tell me. You maybe even give me a good idea for travel in the future. Okay, guys, uh, appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow's a travel vlog, and then uh, hang out with, uh, with all of my buddies. They're going to be coming over to the house on Thursday. Why not? Okay.
Talk to you then. See ya. So I did a little bit of recon. Uh, Spiderco factory store is actually in Golden, Colorado, which is really close to Denver and Aurora, which is about an hour or something away from Colorado Springs. So not in the cards this time. However, um, may make that work in the future. Okay.